you're suspecting, and you lose this uh, initial anchor on, on the bomb site, the one player that can actually stop them from getting into the bomb site and getting the defuse. You know, you think that there's this this timing that you have to hit so much earlier. You could have ran up the connector; it would have been very vulnerable to the AWP. But he went for security, made sure he wasn't going to get picked, and yeah, Windingo weren't on it fast enough. Be surprised if we see just dedicated sight holds all the way through now Ooh. for Windingo. Another pick in the mid control. Pretty slow to react, and the AWP of Dillian wasn't there on time. So another man down situation that the CTs have to find something out of. I have to say, the riflers on Windingo right now are looking. Like they leave something to be desired. Yeah, way more inconsistent. First dash. The UMP is what's spotted. They are seriously waiting for Windingo to make a move. And just as they give up holding the top mid push. Knight's still able to 180 spin around. Bishop actually got the drop on them, but I think that does give away some of what the game is here for Mad Kings. 40 seconds and grouping to be. Back on the Molly. Rustic, however, might be able to give them a fighting chance, but trade it out so quickly. Baby Rage is right there for Nar and Dillion, though. Over here, and Dillion's gonna come through with a quick double. Coat is gonna try and make his way through. Slow creeping forward, but Dillion has got it down. Finally, Windingo find themselves on the board, and we find ourselves in the airs off the viewers. Yes, hello, everybody. Hello. Sorry, guys. Tech hiccups coming in, and uh, we are incredibly apologetic, but now we have a pause. So, yeah. It's all good. First round gained an immediate pause from Mad Kings. I can respect this. You know, they're they're on a roll. They understand as well that this is kind of tilting for the other team. You lose one round and you're calling a timeout already. You haven't really stumbled too hard. But yeah, left a, a lot to the late round there. And in spite of them getting in the entries, there was a lot of info gained for Windingo. And you're going to expect the CT side to be more on the offensive in these upcoming rounds. The only reason they got that info in the first place was because they were a man down. Like I said, they've been getting kills on the bomb sites, but they haven't been able to convert in any of these post plants. Gotta say, these are some really fast mid control <laughs> protocols coming through. They're so quick to get into top connector. And consistently with the Molotov straight over to short, they really try and exploit that instant window spoke as much as humanly possible. Coat is exploiting for Nar as much as humanly possible. Dillion seems to be the only one putting up a defense, but he's missed out his second shot and maybe his second chance. Bomb is still dropped though. Oh, it's recovered. Oh. Nicely done by Slayer. Trying to go for the swing, trying to take advantage of the fact that he thought that Dillion would flick onto the bomb, but Restix taking his time, and he finds a quick smoke kill as well. Zoki, last to fall, and looking at how quickly Preddy and Restix are able to make their way over, it just makes a world of a difference. Yeah, I mean, perfectly played there from Dillion, hitting some pivotal shots that allowed more space for these connector rotates to come in from Windingo. The idea is really good here from Mad Kings, by the way. Sitting inside of the top con smoke and ready to burst on that A bomb site. They throw a flash to move up jungle. If there's anybody top balk, they're going to be caught in a division about whether they have to care about Palace or care about the connector players approaching him because he doesn't want to get shot in the side of the head. But really laser focused was for Nar on the idea of somebody coming through Palace. Still wasn't enough. No, very, very well could have been for Nar turning just as the Palace player peaked. I would like to mention just a you know quick one that yeah yeah even though Windingo is down two to eight, Dillion's fifteen and five. Some of those kills are you know empty calories, but man's eating a bunch. Yeah, he he's been the one that has been consistent out of all of these rounds. But like you the said, night. the riflers have been on a bit of a struggle bus. Some of these kills, like you said as well, were on the save. 
or in already lost rounds, but see if we can keep it up. Estic's first kill over at the B-bomb site. They've got pistols here on the Mad King squad and very little else. Just a few flashes. Scaling out has been broken down, so even a molly that lands at their feet shouldn't be a single casualty and there won't be. Windingo are back into winning ways and they have disrupted that flow, that momentum that Mad Kings had built up at the start of this game. Got to say, it seemed like Restic is one of the only other steady pair of hands that's been coming through for Windingo. Obviously, it's going to be hard to rotate over at the B anchor and actually have that much impact when it's been so many A hits time after time. But he has also just gotten a bunch of anti eco kills technically there. So, yeah. But generally speaking, whenever he's come over to the A sign, good for a kill or two. It admittedly yeah. doesn't help when uh, he can't stick the defuse in time. And those are also solid kills to get. You know, keep your economy yeah. afloat for what is to be a stretch of rounds that you're hoping to get to at least even as you can do at the end of this half gotta love it but re-peeking into the tech nine is always scary for nas here to give him some cover fire as well and baby rage well he knows he knows it might be molding time never lucky <laughs> Good set of rounds has actually put Windingo in a decent position already. You win this one and you're up all the way up to six potentially. Say, not out of uh, not out of uh, heavy water yet, but they started swimming. Wow, the pings are great. Yeah, Slayer is the only one that's looking a little wild. I'm always really impressed whenever we see like incredibly low ping over in these online matches. It's just like, wow, you're all on 10 and blow. That's pretty impressive. Speaking of pretty impressive, Dillian's now getting involved in the early rounds as well. Prior to this, we've largely seen him mitigate any sort of sight hits. Now, he wants to break apart their default as well. said it earlier, but uh, the, the mid control and these mid picks that Mad, Mad Kings had gotten so many times over was a big reason as to why Windingo might have felt a little stressed in late rounds. Might have even wanted to be more and more aggressive, but even with them getting a pick, they're still probing. You bitch up, waiting to round that corner or ready to address any sort of aggression here from Mad Kings back in the area. Flash is great. It's so well timed. And so Zaki hits the deck. Bishop can get out. Great sequence. Fantastic stuff. Even the secondary flashes just to make sure that in case they're coming out around that 50 second mark, which is when teams start to get a little bit nervous if they haven't gotten a all of mid control. I mean, you see the time is run so thin here for Mad Kings and they haven't mm. really made up, uh, they haven't really made up their minds. They might even just call off this round. Wouldn't hate that. They do have the op as well. Would be nice to save that one forward. Yeah, they're not going for this. Running low on rounds in this first half. Windingo back in it. Five rounds in a row and doing so in back-to-back -back rounds where they don't lose a single player. Their money is minted for the last couple and a half. I want to see what changes, what goes different here for Mad Kings. Is there anything that changes? Because if so much was predicated on getting the opening kill and they are losing it now consistently, large in part due to the efforts that Dillian is putting on this mid control. Mad Kings might go to some executes or some faster plays over at one of the bomb sites. Doesn't seem like that's the plan right yeah, now. Just a spread become, default. They've become a lot more worried about Dillion being able to find these pickoffs early in. I think the call from them is just, well, Dillion's getting us when we're going for these fast side hits. And now these past few, it's been early default aggression being punished as well. So maybe they're trying to slow things down. But do they have that second gear in them when they've been running on fifth all this time? started standard and now we start to see an extra player lean over to maybe take mid a little later pretty bishop bar is still there with their rifles seems like they'll try and go for a little tried and true 
Oh, they might, they might have hit the timing. Dillion's rotated over, so you've got no op over here to try and protect them. And this is a very late hit for the mid players. They want to get in and get this bomb planted, then have the rotations be cut off by two players. This is such a big risk for them to take. Preddy is yet to get involved, but he's going to see this cross coming through and try and gander the spam. The flash able to force him off. Bomb yet to be planted, and Bishop's timing is perfect. He's cut them off, and there's a second player right below him. He's going to have heard that scope as well, and Slayer missing shots means Bishop. Bishop's Tech 9 can rule all over that middle area. Dillion, not there. No problem. Yeah, Bishop has been so impactful in the past in these past few gun rounds. The timings that he's had on the aggression towards top mid and now as well preventing his A players from getting wrapped as well. You know, they throw the very standard smoke smoke on top stairs and jungle to see if they can funnel the CTs into connector miss out on the timing and Bitchop does not get a very well see, s seen Bitchop move over try and get more information in mid and have an urgency to go over towards a but they had minimal contact on the bomb site get another instance where comms look good here for windingo not too panicked and the fact that they're able to keep them like that after you know what being down eight and zero and losing this devastating clutch as well yeah I want to see who's coaching them. I'll, I'll be honest, this is just... Mental I'm looks really good. impressed. Their coach is a fellow called Joman from Peru. So yeah, man. Shout out Joman. Who's he man? Was legit. Jo Joe man. You know Joe. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, no. Joe Sorry. man. I know. That was just... <laughs> Dillion! He's not joking about, though. Problem is that Frenar has already been put on the side. He's not been able to do anything whatsoever, and CT's got full access. Or the T's have got full access to CT. Trying to funnel in through jungle is going to be difficult. The T's won't be able to cross over any more players at the very least, and there is still one CT who's trying to come in late, but that's Restic secondary op, so what can he even get done in this position? Mad Kings, the time is ticking down low. Zaki just needs to hit a few crucial shots, but he's not managed any of them. Baby Ray's still alive, but Coat reveals his position. It's all down to Baby Ray's. He almost gets it, and there's going to be time right down to the wire. But just enough to get the defuse right at the nick of it. Yeah, that is way too close. But they had a man advantage coming into it. And they were able to hold on a 7-0 to zero streak towards the tail end of that first half. Where it felt like Mad Kings might have been able to dominate coming out of that T side. Instead, the shoe is on the other foot. The momentum fully taken away from them. Not going to be pleased about how that half has ended up panning out, considering the only man they had to really deal with for the longest of times was Dillian. And we were talking about these riflers that weren't showing up, but then they started hitting shots. These late executions that Mad Kings kept on going for, trying to burst in. There was Util still left for Windingo. The comms looked clean. And they had some great mid-round reactions. So see if they can bring that energy into that second half. And will Mad Kings have the same fortitude that Windingo did when they ended up having these this long streak of rounds run against them? All starts with the pistol. Another credit pistol. to Mad Kings. Yeah, credit to Mad Kings. Even yesterday, they were still able to persevere through in the face of being absolutely crushed by Fluxo. We're always still going for you know a couple of cute plays here and there on their individuals. So. There you have it. Knight just walks through, dominates Restic. Good to see him back to winning ways on these early entries. The flashbang is good to l allow them through, but they know Knight's position. They won't know that there are three more players in CT. For Nars about to peek into them, and oh my goodness, he's just run all over their faces. But Baby Rage isn't done yet. He may have lost a round from this position earlier on in the first half, but this time it'll be his time to shine. Bought it. Dillion, one on three, and he has been the man with the hot hand, but usually with the AWP, and Baby Rage will put it to rest. It's time to go night-night, and Windingo, so close to being able to pull things off. You know, this double entry that Frenar gets in towards CT, but it's Baby Rage that shifts the story.
yeah, things could have certainly gone differently had Baby Rage not stepped up to the plate. But one more player CT than I think Windingo were even expecting. The rotates were very quick. Say the... That is feisty. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe he's just gone out and swung like that. Nobody from short or con really helping him out. Okay, just flashes all over and okay. Zaki will sweep up. So he was happy to hey take guys, those duels. Just throw a flash out in mid. What for? Um, Watch this. Info. <laughs> uh, Good read on the economy. I think this is also one of those things where you, you have to reflect on the fact that the South American scene have do have some specific tendencies. I think when we look at, uh, you know, Asian CS, there are some teams that like forcing in the second round, some teams that don't. Whereas in in Europe, I actually think it has become so so standard for second round buys because the I don't know the confidence is there. We've seen how many games can get flipped on their head as well. And uh, I don't know. I, I I have to say, I just think that in Europe, a lot of it is slight laziness to not do the match because I think some teams should do it but unless you've got like consistent kills on the deagle etc with some players or you know you've got like put a lot of time to stratting for those half by rounds where you know you're going to be able to get at least three kills in it, you know if everything goes out well I just don't think it's worth it I I really I really don't I think the tendency is higher to do it in first halves mm -hmm. rather than seconds obviously because like there's more context yeah. added to your second half but yeah, it is kind of interesting to to watch these teams. I think we've seen consistently through this tournament that second round, just only Glock rounds have been fairly common. Yes. That's one of those things where, um, again, just to add more context, if you don't have amazing Deagle players very often, you might just want to go for those Glocks. Uh, I'm looking forward to the time when we actually finally get to a level where uh, certain teams have figured out that, okay, this is the sweet spot for us to put about 700 to 800 dollars in other teams want to go for the full half by uh, rather full force but other teams want to go for just glocks because they know that their rifles will be better they've got a good call for that alternatively going for the 800 dollar buy means that your first gun round is going to be actually have all the utility etc obviously like you mentioned second house always going to have come with its own set of complications but and i don't know i sometimes feel like it's a little bit of laziness and you know sitting down and crunching numbers Think it's a, I just think it's a feeling. And we got this. Seen too many wins on four spies to knock it past them, so I don't know. I'm with it. But these teams were not. First gun round here for Windingo in the second half. Mad Kings have snuck themselves back into a considerable lead. We'll see if this will be disrupted once again. This Windingo squad, if you didn't watch yesterday, were masters at manipulating rotates and making things look so... It was honestly like they, they could see everyone's positions and they were masterminding it. See if they can do something similar here on this T side or not. Very different maps from Nuke to Mirage. Also less likely to have anti shredded as much. Dillion's got to be careful. He's got no help coming his way. If he wants to move in with this bomb, he is about to be given a rude awakening. Or rather, a good night's of sleep. Oh, he's been pushed into. Smoke actually set him off and now trying to take the railing position. Knight will end up falling, not expecting him to be pushed up that high. It's Restic who continues through. Coat will find another. And in the meanwhile, it's Zaki oh. to get the turnaround. Man's a beast of the farmers. And I never expect to say that about anyone. Grenade's going to keep Restic away as well. Not helping his HP whatsoever. 17 HP 1 on 3 is impossible for him right now. And there you have it. Mad Kings find the 11th. Yeah, that recoil adjustment there from Zaki was fantastic. First player aggro at ramp gets dealt with easily, and you think this round is going to start to shift in the favor of Windingo, but this is where it all turned on its head when the FAMAS broke through with some action. I oh, mean, beautiful, man. That's it's just... not exactly a spray transfer. He took an extra second to reset, but knew exactly where that second peak was coming from. Yeah, it just makes it better. <laughs> Masterful stuff, and the Mad Kings keep things 
moving onward into the second. See, now they're comfortable going with like a half buy. So they've got still floating cash and they'll have all the bells and whistles in the next round. Resting's got 850. Renard's got 1350. They need a bomb pot. Ah, they, they got the max loss bonus. <laughs> Well, yeah, that makes it look easy. He really does sometimes, doesn't he? <laughs> Only three extra kills, but swung all the way out through that smoke and didn't stop fighting. This has been a very streaky game. Opening eight rounds for Mad Kings, next seven for Windingo, and now four in a row here for Mad Kings once again. Very quick up short is the call actually to come through. It's Bishop trying to overrun, but Jockey's found Zocky rather has found the first, and with the grenade through making it two. For Nar is traded out all too quickly for him to have any sort of impact in this round, and they haven't even had to vacate that A-bomb site. So when Dingo's sneaky beaky maneuvers that they're trying to go for have been thwarted already. I tried to change up the pace. And Dingo were so patient on, on Nuke T sides. But I think some of the desperation bleeding through. Try and catch him out with something crazy, but look how defensive Mad Kings are playing it, even though they have this man advantage. They don't want to peel those numbers away. This player in a palace, and Nightwolf swing and hit the low ground player. Rustic already known and quantified. Nightwolf be there to trade. I love this. This is great. Honestly, this is Mad Kings recognizing that they've got a couple of players who are having a hot hand and a couple who just might be better. You take the peaks, you get the advantage, and, you know, you make like a tree in a leaf. I don't even think it's it's about some players being hot or some players being <clears throat> um, sort of shooting straighter today for, for the Mad Kings. <laughs> I think it is uh, firmly just giving a massive amount of respect there for Windingo. They know that the only way they can lose that round is if they start peaking individually, and so they go for jump spots. Oh, no, I mean just the early aggression into resetting is uh, what I meant. Yes. Yeah. Like, and they get the early aggression because they're shooting straight, like you said. <laughs> this is a very funny. <laughs> Never had a foot like that, put That's it that way. Wonky. Well, Baby Rage, though, has been consistently impressive. This time only good for the one, though. Multi kill will evade him, but he's given his teammates time to rotate. Oh, Verastic and Dillion, however, might have found a gap in this defense. Zaki. Trying to come through on the flank, smoke will be interrupting him, but as that dissipates, they're keeping an eye out. They've spotted him. Restic and Dillion are quite low, and Zaki is happy to take advantage of the fact Restic. Still alive. Slayer is coming in from very far off. Don't know what he's been up to all this time, and he's revealed his position by switching out weapons. Restic will have heard that. And Slayer takes the peek, takes a swing. He will oh. get the frag. Mad Kings can do no wrong. He had the timing. He shot the first bullet, but Slayer is so quick to react. Didn't have a kit either, but it doesn't matter whatsoever. Mad Kings will continue this streak. Six in a row on this CT side. Wingdingo's patience hasn't followed through into the lower bracket game. want to say... We kind of highlight the fact that Mad Kings only had two round wins in this tournament coming into mm -hmm. this lower bracket game, so I think it was very easy to maybe underestimate them. It's what, a 7, 800% increase? Well, 600% increase so far, but if they get to 16, it'll be 700%. Yeah, and it's looking like things will continue that way as well. Gun round here for Windingo, and the AWP has struck first already for the CTs. They've gotten a lot of mid control in this round though. See if they can actually build on that and actually get a second prong to the assault on either bomb site or not. They're tricky maneuvers that they were so good at performing on nuke. None of that has culminated in today's play. Oh, beautiful. Excellent. Player started at A. 
And now he's ending life on B. Coat doing the same. Of course, he didn't have to travel as far, but Dillion and Frenar will send him off to another dimension. Frenar really fighting for his life, and ah, uh, Zaki misses the timing right as he almost had it. Both players being that low meant that he should have been able to get that kill for free a hundred times out of 99. Eat Molotov forces up Frenar as well. Dillion's all alone. Has to pull this clutch together. Or else Windingo might as well say goodbye to any chance that they have of bringing this one back. He's playing this patiently, letting the CTs check everything, make the mistakes in unorthodox position. And he's got the first one. Knight is on the other side now. Position revealed. Coming in from the other point. Oh. Instead, it's Dillion to save it with just the one HP. Yeah, as if he survives on such low HP. I mean... You think about how this round starts off, it's effectively a 5-on-3, but if not for the fact that Frenar gets all of these entries into the B bomb site, the alien doesn't have the chance to come back and clutch things like this. Oh, last bullet did 26 damage, he's so close to him. And... Let's get... A small sign of life. A pulse, maybe. Need a few more bumps of the heart to say that Windingo are alive and kicking, and Dillian will be there to act as the defibrillator. Solid. An angle that is often not explored by AWPers, usually riflers that take it. Oh, Freddy. No. Smoke faded, and Zaki didn't full clear it, but there's a second player there, so trades available. I will full clear it regardless. He faked the fallback, but nobody came after him. He might be discovered regardless. This is the way Knight is pushing all the way through. Oh, they're ready for this. They are so ready for this for Nar spray. A little bit shaky, a little bit on and off, but it will not matter. Knight's demise means that the A-bomb site no longer has anyone coming over. Knight was hoping to gather the information necessary to stack on the B-bomb site. Instead, they now have to separate. I would like to see a save from Mad Kings. <clears throat> How slow things are going, they are going to be tempted to at least have one to each of these sites. If they can thin the herd before that plant goes down, there's certainly a chance. Well, look, man, they're letting the clock wind down so far, and they haven't smoked CT. For Nar does have a smoke. This would be about the time you want to see it used. But if Baby Rage is able to come through and drop this bomb, everything is suddenly possible. At least it's being planted at the right point, and Baby Rage will have to actually reveal his position by dropping down. Doesn't look like they want to go for this. Yeah, no one's pushing CT. Uh, that's yeah. what Baby Rage was waiting for. By playing the, the passive game, if Windingo wanted to play that post plant from the, the spawn area, that would have been the way in. But they tap out safe plant, safe plays from Windingo when they have the smoke advantage. Kit. He's, He's not smoke going for kit. it. He's not going I for wish. it. I wish he was. Teams are so careful these days to have somebody at least hovering around the bomb. Doesn't it suck that teams have gotten so good at CS? You know, we don't get ninjas anymore. <laughs> I mean, you say yeah. that. You, we still... There there are the occasional that slip by. Okay, fine. And I people sometimes make it a top five, but we know they don't belong there. <laughs> That's when I was thinking things were looking <laughs> done in this first, second half. Mad Kings are not able to bring it to that final <clears throat> set of hurdles. A long relay run, but they've lost the baton. Oh. Freddy's gotta be careful. What's going on over here? They're jumping up and down to avoid the shots, and now with the Glock out, oh. Freddy's not letting go. Not double. Oh my god, he's even got the right graffiti for it. Yeah, he's got it ready. My man's a vandal in more ways than one. How many graffitis can you keep? Oh! Okay. Spray it. Do it, Slayer. <laughs> he doesn't know about it. He can't get revenge. Can, however, pick up the guns. And that's actually going to be interesting because Dillion is in a tricky spot. Flashbang over. Dillion's been forced back. Pulling out the Glock in range? Okay, Dillion. I see you. 
Yeah, no escape for the rifles. He was definitely chancing it a little bit, but... I mean, commendable effort here from Freddy. The fact that Code has a full buy running through <laughs> that smoke and is outdone by a Glock. There's a lot how things have changed. And I have to start to call into question whether Mad Kings have more to their playbook than simply setting up for this mid control and trying to go for a convergence on the bomb site. Right now they are losing these opening fights, and again that will continue. Zaki, this time over, moving in towards the connector. The flash is perfect, and things go from bad to worse. Windingo, they have been so dominant in this area. It's easy to see why they would want to get a faster pace about them, but Dillian can't even get his up to strike. In all fairness, Zaki's generally been pretty good in mid. A couple of rounds, yes, for sure, but I'd like to see him going back to these winning ways. Rest stick almost gets turned around upon after he misses that first chance. Yeah, I think a little bit of panic now sets in. One kill, a lot of damage onto Slayer. Back to playing, fully respecting the idea of Restic winning this clutch. Doesn't mean they won't box him in, though. They've cut off some of the options, playing deep inside of the B apartments and pushed in ramp. So not a lot of different areas that Rustic can move to evade a CT gaze. Oh! oh. Don't want to okay. evade the CT gaze, just want to shoot him down. Like him in the eye. What more? To the skull. Not quite this time, but why not with the second chance given up? Bombsite is accessible. M4 after? Okay. Mate, you're getting some crispy headshots. I might want to stay there. But even so, the CTs are very split apart. He's got a real shot at this Windingo. This was the round where Mad Kings felt like they had it all. They started pushing into Restic and Ace Clutch potentially being lined up over here. Is that what I see in my mind's eye? Baby Rage and Knight, they're both inching forward. Knight's already on the bomb site, and he's been spotted. Knight will put rest into his name. Restic. Almost getting that one out. I have to say, you could see it in your head. Yeah, what a clutch attempt here from Restic. I mean, the fact that he goes by uncleared and he hits these crispy shots. Yeah, Ooh. you could have really seen him pull this off. Usually, when when players hit shots like this, they they almost enter this this flow state, or they're they're so in sync with the game. I think the the slow retake there from Mad Kings catching him out. You know, he was sat on the that default part of the site and wanted to evade their eventual defuse attempt. Mad Kings now within an inch of eliminating Windingo and continuing in the lower bracket. Yes, please. Restic I was really turned up. <laughs> Sitting some really clean shots. Like you said, sometimes players just get into that zone and it seems like he is very much... He is very much in that state. Yeah, better late than never. Never is around the corner for Wendingo, though, and this is when they need to start getting their boogie on, otherwise the dance floor is going to kick them out very soon. Knight, the bouncer for this ace site, waits around, great timing that connector smoke, and grenade goes in as well, Restic's been weakened up just a bit, but the flashbang has come through, there's been rotation from the CTs, they're all already here, Fnaf spamming out Knight, he's been put out immediately, Smoke down on the bomb sides, giving some space to Baby Rage to play from, and Slayer has taken the chance to peek out wide. Restic is there to punish, and he's going to keep it going. Dillion finds Code, and in the meanwhile, it's just Baby Rage left for Nar to shut him down as well. The dance floor is occupied, and they're not going anywhere. Yeah, no money here for the Mad Kings as well to answer back in this following round, so Windingo will have a little sigh of relief for the fact that they can start to close in on this gap, but some... Great entries being hit there from Windingo, and then that collapse on the A bomb site. You could see all the rotates looking at the that different angles. You know, concerned about the site floor with how many there were ramp, and then the Palace players sprung out. Just a lot of numbers there for the T side attack. You know, these guys don't give up without a fight. 
Indingo are perseverant. Or at least slower games from some of the riflers that were popping off in yesterday's game. Fenar was one of the players that was certainly getting a, a, quite a few entries, especially on Nuke. That okay. is not what you want to see. <clears throat> Guess it depends who you're rooting for, I suppose. That's... Well, if you're Windingo, you don't want to see that because it <laughs> might actually cause some urgency on the move into B, and that can be dangerous. There can be a stack Zaki. here, but they lack info. Zaki's rotating there as well. They're going to get no info out of this Molotov. There's nothing that they're about to find out. None whatsoever. No one's going to be ticking. This is a great place for Zaki to be in. He's come through with a second as well. He's going to keep it going at Vines all the time in the world. Delian on the drop downs. Meta USB. Rollstick's going to get it done on his own. He's oh. done good, but he's got to be great now. Knight. A one-on-one -on -one with Restic on 12 HP. The USB has never had a fairer duel. Restic. Has to out position and out play like nothing ever before. 20 seconds, feeling the urge to clear every corner, check every nook and cranny. The bomb is planted. Knight waiting for that audio cue, but he might have given it up. Restic has put himself in such a good position to take this one home, but he's not got the read, not quite yet. Knight creeping over. Has already moved past. Restic's not going to realize this. He, will he check the bomb site itself as Knight moves forward? Oh, Knight's been found! Restic has got it! What a save coming out from him. Oh my days. Knew he had to hit a headshot and he even took some gambles here. I mean, making any sort of playmaking move, taking a chance by making it into market where Knight could have been very well sitting in wait, but the Mad Kings have been very respectful in clutch scenarios, and Knight was all the way back top mid, so couldn't keep him contained in the site. Very well done from Restic. A massive bailout, because that could have been the game. Mad Kings had some very sharp shooting from Zaki. Back into full gun rounds, and that will still shake your confidence here if you're Windingo, almost losing to a lack of a buy. It is solid, pretty down to 50. Weak in the knees, but still grouping up in the connector. Arwin Dingo on the attack. They want to go for a split towards this A bomb site, maybe phase this smoke and see if they can collapse on in. They haven't done this in many, many rounds, and I don't know that Mad Kings will be prepped for it. Lights on the side, and already, and Preddy's there with a the second Slayer, the only person to break blood on the CT side. And he's gone and done it again. Now a three on two, but he's over peaked and Preddy is ready for the mistakes to be made. Does he expect Baby Rage to be here already? There is a big question. Baby Rage is moving through. He's been given all this space for free. Preddy, right around the corner. Fast rank avoided. He takes a peek. Baby Rage, however, will take him over. It's all down to Mr. Restic again. Bomb to be planted. He has stuck it. Baby Rage is low. Coat is not feeling too healthy either, but finally... The Mad Kings will come through Windingo despite attempt after attempt, clutch after clutch, heroics after heroics, they will not be able to bring it back. Yeah, I mean, a tough loss, that's for sure, but Mad Kings certainly showing us a different face to their attack. We painted them as underdogs.